up? Let's talk about basic MRI resolution. Let's go. Welcome back guys. For those who are new, my name is Bakken again. I'm an MRI radiographer and in my channel I'm covering uh, tips and tricks from uh, basic to advanced MRI topics just like this one. So if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so. Today I'm going to take you to the scanner and we're going to do some basic MRI optimization. You know the golden triangle where you have the SNR resolution and the scan time is somehow a trade-off whenever you want more of this or more of that. But ahead of us now, we're moving towards a new era where we uh, scan faster and have higher resolution and using artificial intelligence. So this is extremely cool stuff ahead of us. So just looking forward to that. But today we're going to do the old school way optimization. So I'm going to give you three options here now. So be honest with yourself, which one do you think will give the sharpest image? So do not think of uh, the SNR and uh, the scan time because uh, when I'm going to optimize it's going to be approximately the same. So we're only going to look for the resolution. So I'm going to give you a little bit of thinking time. So I'll be right back. All right, do you choose one, two or three? Keep it to yourself and let's go to the scan and we will take a look at this. Let's go. All right, guys, we are live at 3T, but uh, what I'm about to show you here today works on 1.5 as well. So uh, let's go and remember this works for 2D and we're gonna watch the difference between different resolution and uh, I'm gonna compare these images uh, head to head with each other in the end of uh, the scanning. So we are at the ankle using um, 16 channel uh, foot ankle coil and let's go with the transversal localizer first. Just gonna try to do localizer for the ankle first. So I decided in my mind that let's go for a T1 sagittal. Let's um, scan these different um, resolutions just to compare in the end of the video. All right, so I'm happy with the positioning now. So let's go to resolution. And let's start with uh, 512 face resolution and uh, face resolution. Let's go to 50%. So this means in terms that 50% of 512, that means 256 face encodings direction. So what you see here is a choir matrix. The first number you see there, 256, that's face encoding. And then you have the frequency encoding 512. Remember, this can varies from vendor to vendor. But for the interface of the Siemens users, this is how it works. So 512 times 50%, that's 256. And then you can say, let's say 80%, that's 410 face encodings. So that's just a simple mathematics. So what you can do now, uh, before I continue, I just put on interpolation. I'm thinking actually about making a video about interpolation because there's so much to say there. Some say use it, some say it's not, but uh, in my opinion, I always use this. But uh, like I said, I'm going to try to make a video of this later. So let's hover your mouse uh, where, over the voxel size up there. And then you get more information regarding the voxel sizes. So whenever the neuroradiologist demanding, I want 512 matrix. You know what? 512 doesn't mean a sh Sorry for my language because the field of view is then divided by the uh, matrix. The, that's why you get the voxel size. So the voxel size is what's count here. So let's say you have 170 field of view here divided by 512. You get 0 0.33 millimeter. That's for frequency, okay? And then you have 170 divided by 256. That's 0 0.66, that's for phase encoding. And then in the end, you have three millimeter slice thickness. 
So that means in terms you are acquiring rectangular voxel sizes. And then you can see the recon there. So interpolate it down to 0 0.70 times 0 0.17. That's what interpolation do. So let's uh, check this sequence a little bit. I'm just going to write the name here so we remember 512. And then it says 50p means 50%. And then let's take 100 here just to add a little bit signal. So remember that uh, I'm going to do three tests here now. And uh, do not think of SNR and scan time will be approximately the same. What I want to highlight here is the resolution, is the voxel sizes, okay? So let's scan that one. Let's pull this sequence down. We want the sequence to be the same when it comes to the positioning and slices and so on. So let's uh, change this base resolution to 448 and then 75. So now we have the face encodings 336 instead of earlier 256. Okay, so I'm just going to rename now so we remember. And then take a closer look at the voxel size up there. And now we have 0 0.51 times 0 0.36. So now the voxel size is a little bit bigger, but still rectangular voxel sizes, right? And then you interpolate it down to 0 0.19 times 0 0.19. All right. So let's scan that one. And then the third one as the last. So we change this to 384, but now 100%. This means in terms that you are acquiring matrix face encoding, 384 and then frequency encoding 384 so let's change the name there 384 100% and now let's check the voxel sizes and now you're acquiring the voxel size 0 0.44 times 0 0.44 so it's square right and then you re do a interpolated uh, reconstruction down to 0 0.22 so half of it both in frequency and face encoding direction. So this means that the voxel size here are square and somehow bigger voxel sizes than the 512. But this is a square one. So let's check that one. We apply for that one. So while these three are scanning and before we compare them head to head, and since I have a little bit scan time, I just want to do a PD fatsat sagittal as well. Just two of those. So let's check this one. Let's check 384 and then 50% into Polino. So now with this PD fatsat sagittal, you are acquiring 0 0.89 times 0 0.44. So it's rectangular, right? Okay. So let's rename that one. So we know. Okay, let's do another one, 320 and then 100%. Since the voxel size is a little bit bigger now, we get more signal, of course. I'm just going to reduce the SNR a little bit, so the scan time and lower the scan time a little bit, so it will be approximately the same as the other one. And I'm just going to rename this one now. So this means in terms that the last one is performed as square voxel sizes, okay? So here we go. I'm not going to reveal which one is which one, but you remember we did three tests on this T1 sagittal, one, two, and three. So let's check the first one. If you look at the first one there, it's, it's good, right? It's not that bad, but then you see in the middle, whoa, what happens here? A little bit sharper and then suddenly your eyes turn around and then your head spins and then you say to yourself hey man the middle is way better and then you have a third one this is a little bit the same as the middle also let's zoom in a little bit and let's check for the details you can see the area there it's much sharper in the middle and as in the third but then come again look at the third image there Look at that area. For me, it seems to be a little bit sharper. And of course, this is from my computer. But if you look in the packs with the higher 
uh, resolution screen, it's much better to delineate. It's much better to see the difference. But from here, I, I can see the difference. I hope you can see the difference as well. So hmm, I, I think the third one is the best here out of one, two, and three. But let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'll stop there. So still, for me, the third one is the best. So I'm going to reveal now which one is which one. The first one you see there is the 512 by 50%. The middle one is 448 by 75%. And the last one is 384 by 100%. So the first one is perform rectangular exercises, same as the middle rectangular. And then in the end, square. So in terms of square box sizes, however, the box sizes as in the third one, it is bigger, but it's done square and the end results give you a sharp image. So remember this, it's not always best to have the high res resolution if you're not playing the parameters correctly. Okay, so let's move to the fat set. So I stop there. Also, I'm not going to reveal here yet, but as you can see, the first one is not that bad. If you have this alone sent into packs, I bet your radiologist would say, hey, this image is good for that short of scan time. But then you have another image compared head to head, which is sharper. Of course, you want number two. Number two is way better. So again, number one is perform rectangular exercises. And number two is perform a square. You can see the big difference there. This is easy to see. It's much sharper. So that's it, guys. I hope this made your head spin around. And uh, yeah, let's end the scan right here. Well, that's it, guys. Were you surprised? If so, I'm going to ask you a question. Which option did you choose? One, two, or three? But you know what? You need to answer me. You need to be honest with yourself. It came to my mind that it's not important for me which option you did choose. The most important thing is that were you honest to yourself and, and did you find this valuable? So I have a question for you before we end this video. Did you find this video valuable? Did you learn anything? Until next time, do not forget to smash the like button if you like this video and of course subscribe. So thanks for the support and uh, for those who did watch till the end of my video, I really appreciate it. Until next time, I'll see you around. Peace out.